Hey everyone, I'm Chef Dennis, and welcome to Around the Kitchen Table. And woohoo, my co host Susan Sarah is here today. She's not on an airplane flying somewhere. I am here. How are you doing? I'm good. You know, it's uh, back to being Florida down here. We're in the 80s, and it's a little, little warm after having the cold snap that we did. But, uh, you know, life is good. What can I say? Good, good. And how was your weekend? Oh, well, actually, it's not a Monday, is it? <laughs> no, no, it's Wednesday. It's the middle of the week. Uh, weekend was good, and uh, so far, so good on the week. You know, I, I actually like this format because I don't feel as rushed going into Monday, and it gives me time to think about things, and, and Wednesday's working out pretty good for me on this on this aspect of the time. So, uh, plus, it's a day Lisa always works, so it works out. Well, for yeah. that. Too. Yeah, now this is great. I enjoy it. And what happened last week, which I said briefly, was I figured I'd get in LA at noon and find three o'clock um, local LA time, which would be 12 o'clock Eastern time. Perfect. No problem. I'm there. Problem was, it really was 9 a.m. LA time. And then I was on the plane. So I, I just, you know, hey. reversed it. But, uh, you know, I always have trouble with it, with uh, time zones. I tend to go the wrong way. And speaking of time zones, I think it's it's uh, daylight savings time this weekend. Did you remember that? Um, no, because I'm expecting four to six, four to eight inches of snow tonight. Oh, you'll no, have. No, I, I'll believe it when I see it. Maybe in June. Oh well, anyway, uh, yeah, because they kick up. I think they start daylight savings earlier and end it later. Uh, you know, it was one of those energy things that we did. Uh, so I don't. Oh, I, don't I, loved, I loved it. I thought it was a great idea. I don't. I don't think the rest of the world does that, do they? They don't go daylight savings. So that that'll change our time zones with with Europe then. That right. That's right. Yes. Yeah. That's right. But you know what? Um, last week, going being in California, first of all, it was amazing, and second of all, it was a. Um, sort of a partner event between Dwell Magazine and Bosch Appliances at the uh, headquarters of Bosch Appliances in right around, um, I think, Newport Beach. So I got really energized, and what I'm going to talk about today, you tell me when, is, um, you know, what's happening in appliances and function and beauty and technology and, oh my goodness, cool stuff. Yeah, I see a lot of changes in appliances these days. Uh, not so much that I'm aware of with dishwashers, but refrigerators are reshaping and and they're uh, reinventing them a little bit with space. And then ranges, of course, are going in different directions. A lot of people are, you know, if you have gas, have the professional type range with the gas burners and the dual ovens and convection ovens, and then the dual so uh, fuel. Uh, ranges are really great too because you know electric cooks better in the oven but who doesn't want gas on the stovetop if they can get it yeah well there's a few other um, technologies too that I'll talk about so, so we'll just well, kind of catch up catch up on appliances excellent and uh, Aslan Bloor is in the house how you doing Aslan Susan Sarah your hair's grown it has. Yes, my hair. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm trying this out. Although, I watched House of Cards last night, and I think I'm liking Claire's um, hair. She has it long, and then she has it, like, short. So, over here. So, I don't know. I'll think about that. <laughs> say anything about my hair growing. I wish. So, you know. <laughs> oh, no, no. And I, I want to say hi to Nazim. Yep. Um, you're working on the new Buffy site. I can't wait to see it. Can't wait to see it. Yeah. I know it's going to be awesome. Okay, and yeah, there he is. Yeah, there we go. That's the one, Bothy. And uh, Coach Moore is in the house. Hey, don't coach. Hi, Coach. Tokyo uh, Candy, I think, is here somewhere. I don't see her, but I think she's here. And then Bruno is here. So we've got kind of an international crowd today. Sure. Kitchen Shaman is here. How you doing, uh, John? It's nice to have you here. Well, let's get started. And uh, actually, what I want to talk about today is is uh, stuffing chicken breasts and the simplicity of it, and how easy it is to do uh, something for parties, something for dinner, just to make things uh, to change things up a little bit. I mean, chicken's still kind of an inexpensive cut of meat, although you know prices have gone up. And if you're buying organic, you know prices are a little bit higher, but still, you know it's more affordable. 
Uh, you can debone your own chicken if you want to save money. Personally, you know, time and energy and scraps, I'll tend to buy bone chicken breasts. And sometimes you can find those family packs and, and they're cheaper. You know, I buy the uh, free range or organic 99% uh, of the time. So, you know, I do look for that. But uh, this is something, if you're having a dinner party, you can make it a little different. You can make it a little special by changing the ingredients. And it's as it's open as much as your imagination and what you want to stuff it with from I think it's a good I think it's a good go to recipe and like you said you know if if you give us some fundamentals some foundation and then we can go from there right yeah, yeah really it is I mean because you can stuff it from a uh, lump crab meat in an imperial to a classic cordon bleu which is cheese and ham I mean the, the sky's the limit vegetables anything you really like there's just a few simple rules that'll help make it not even rules but tips that'll help make it easier for you so let's let's start with the chicken breast and with how you're gonna prepare it and basically what I like to do when I prepare the chicken breast is I put them between let me change cameras remember to do that you guys can't see is I put them between two pieces of plastic wrap all right, I have them on a cutting board. I have my little towel underneath to keep the cutting board from moving so it's stable. And I use a regular meat hammer. Okay, it has uh, some ends on it that are good for like tenderizing beef or pork if it's a thick cut. But for chicken, I use the flat end because I don't want to damage the breasts. They're fairly delicate. And if I start pounding them to death with the other ends, you know, it'll get sloppy and pieces will fly, which is why I cover the top with plastic too, to keep bits of chicken from Can, can I ask off. you, can, I, I have a question. Sure. Okay, so what if you didn't buy the, uh, the thin ones and you mm -hmm. only have the thick ones? I would think there's one of two. I, I would think they would be too thick to pound, or would you slice them across the center, or what, what yep. do you think? I would slice them. And when you get the really thick ones, and you know, I started to buy them to show it, and it was, it was such a heavy pack of chicken. It was twice the amount of money. It was insanely expensive. So I, I bought with the thin ones. But the same thing when you have them, just you know, take a sharp knife and go straight through the middle of them and just kind of butterfly it. You know, think of it in that terms of butterflying, like when you would butterfly a steak or you know, just cut something down the middle. Try and make it as even as possible uh, to, cut this, to cut the pieces in half. So. Okay. Uh, basically, when you're stuffing something, I think you're looking for about a five or six ounce piece tops, somewhere in that range. Uh, and these there were three of these, and it was almost a pound. So that's just about right, five ounces. So in that range is a good size to stuff. You know, it can be bigger, of course, but really there's no reason for it. Go with a smaller size. So let's go back to this. All right, so I've got it here, and like I said, you don't, if I don't have a meat hammer, you can use a regular hammer, wrap the hammer in plastic, and then use the flat side of the hammer when you're pounding out. And uh, one thing you want to do when you pound out is you don't want to just smash the meat. You're not like hammering straight down. You're, you're pounding it, but as you're pounding it, if, if you almost want to pull it out, hit outwards or in or backwards. You want to hit it away from the center of the meat as you're hammering, just to kind of pull the meat with you as you're flattening. I can't believe you're doing it that way. That is another, I'm serious, that's another life-changing tip for me. I mean, you know, you have these hammers and they have both ends that are, you know, purposeful. Whoever thinks of putting it on its side? But oh, yeah. it's, I, this is a nice sense. heavy hammer too. You know, we used to call them these our our equalizers. You know, in case we needed something in the in the back alley. But I don't know how many times I have poked holes in my, you know, uh, chicken breasts or veal, you know, fillets or whatever the thin fillets. On the I mean, it's taken me this many decades to get this life changing little tip. <laughs> well, with veal, you can use. I, I would. A lot of times would use this side for veal, but it's it's again how tender you do it, how lightly you do it, and it's not just a smash down. Okay, it's always like you're working it, almost like you're cutting. Think of it in those terms that you're pushing, pushing, or you know if you turn the meat, pull, 
you know, you're almost trying to take it out like that because you're you're spreading the meat to the side, right? So and how? I mean, isn't it just satisfying to hammer something? I mean, you can get you know, uh, you can get aggressions out. Well, you know, it's funny when I would teach class. The girls would take turns at doing the meat, hammering out the meat, because, and some of them were just a little too enjoyed it, just a little too much. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. So, but they were funny, and I would tell them, you know, get out your aggressions. Teacher gave you a bad grade. Oh, now, yeah. now pounding it out is not a big deal. On which side you pound it out on, uh, you should probably always start with the shiny side up. But I didn't in case of one of these. But here. I had the meat laid out, so it's I still have it on the plastic, so it's ready to go. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to throw a little bit of stuffing together. And I'll show you what I'm doing before we do actually stuff them. And for this, I have some broccoli rob that's cooked and squeezed, and I squeezed a lot of the water out. Now, any kind of a green that you use, you do want to squeeze it out, spinach especially, and get as much of the moisture out of it as you can. Because what happens is that it gets really wet in the stuffing and it will make the, the inside of it kind of messy and maybe not make the it hold together as well as it should be. So you want to take something, either squeeze it out with your hand. If you don't think you're getting enough out, you, if you have a cloth napkin, put it in the center of a cloth napkin and use it and just squeeze it out. And that will help you get a lot of the liquid out. Now, today I'm using feta cheese for my stuffing, but you know you could use just about anything, gorgonzola, ricotta, you know, any any other kind of cheese that you like, goat cheese. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of feta. I don't know if I told you Susan, but I am on a dairy, a cow dairy, soy and now gluten free diet. Wow. Wow, talk about a trifecta. Yeah, I know. But luckily for now, we think I can eat sheep cheese. Sheep casein isn't bothering me. So, uh, and an uh, interesting fact about feta that I didn't know was if it comes from Greece, it's got to be sheep cheese. Oh, interesting. Well, who makes a distinction between, I mean, it's both protein, whether it's cow or sheep. What's the distinction? It's the casein in it. And it's um, the milk casein. Okay. I'm allergic to cow milk casein. Okay. So, and, and you know, and, and we're still the jury's out a little bit on it. We're still talking about it, and people seem to think that if I eat um, grass-fed cheese or butter, it may not affect me the same way because we go back a lot of times to all the additives, the pollutants, the uh, way we have changed how our food is, and the grass-fed tends to be a little more nurtured, and even some of the European uh, items seem to be a little uh, less uh, altered than some of our things in the mm -hmm. United States. So, but uh, right now I'm staying away from it completely. I <laughs> even bought some vegan cheese. I haven't tried it yet. But <laughs> wow. But anyway. Good. Yeah, this is a very simple way to mix up, and I've got, like I said, I've got some uh, broccoli rob, you could use spinach, you could use uh, dandelion greens, you could use kale, you could use any other bitter green that you like. And and the sky's the limit on what you put in. Normally I would put in some roasted red peppers for color. Not for a whole lot else other than to brighten it up, but I didn't have any. So I decided to throw some mushrooms in. Okay. Okay. Just because I had some. And just to make it a little more flavorful and interesting. Oh, so many things are coming to mind. I mean, I'm thinking pine nuts. I'm thinking sun-dried tomatoes. Mm -hmm. You know, so many savory or or textured mm -hmm. um, items come to mind. Now I'm going to add a little salt and pepper to it, and that's basically going to be it. Uh, you're, you're done mixing it up, and you can season it however you like, and even. Thinking about something very simple, um, I'm going to do is I'm going to take a smaller breast here that I have. So you don't have, I don't see breadcrumbs or eggs. No, in not in the, in the stuffing. The cheese is going to help bind it. I squeezed a lot of the the water out of the broccoli rob, so the necessity for putting an egg in really 
you know, you really don't have to do it. The cheese is going to help to hold together, and there's not a lot of other moisture. I actually squeezed out the mushrooms as well, mm -hmm. so that they would uh, not have as much liquid in it. Because it's it's always the liquids that you're putting in to whatever you're putting in the stuffing that'll be your undoing in too many liquids. You now you can always hit it with a sauce. You can always do something else with it afterwards. But you want to keep the stuffing as light as possible. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. So, but like I was saying, with something like chicken, say this was even a smaller piece of chicken and you wanted to serve an appetizer size, something as simple as parsley, as parsley, a little salt, mm -hmm. a little pepper, maybe some pine nuts you were talking about. Yeah. Or maybe a, just a little sprinkling of goat cheese. Right. Now, could you could you could you put them on skewers? You could, but and I put a little olive oil in there too, just for moisture. But then you roll them up like this, and it's a little roulade, a little rolling team. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And then this is where the breadcrumbs come in, and this would be like a little chicken rolling team. Then you would just fry it. So this is, you might want to give two or three, and you could put all kinds of fresh herbs inside. You could put a little different type of green inside. So you can take that in a lot of different directions. Okay. Now That's what I'm great. doing with this, now think about your chicken. All right, think about what you're putting in. You can just use the stuffing that we just made, or you can go a little bit further with it, and you could take a piece of ham. You could take a piece of prosciutto salami, pepperoni, any kind of flavorful meat that might add a little bit more to it and you can start your layer with that. You could also start it with a layer of cheese like if you want to put a layer of provolone in there or something of that nature and then put your stuffing in here. And We're just going to actually kind of roll these up. And when I roll them up, I want to kind of tuck a little one end to it. And then I'm going to form it a little bit with my hand, form like a little football. If you can, you want to seal the ends. Mm -hmm. Just so that the, the product doesn't ooze out as much. With, with string? A little bit of string? You know, I, you know, I don't ever really like to use that. If I really am worried that it's going to come out a lot, I mean, you could put a toothpick in it if you wanted to. And, and you know, you don't even have to saute these. You could just roast these. You could dredge them with a little, you could just put a little olive oil on them, season them up, pop them in the oven. Okay. The other option is, and, and I'm not going to bread these because I'm not going to bread anything really heavy uh, with a breading station. And normally with a breading station, I would have an egg wash, the flour, and then the breadcrumbs. And these are gluten-free breadcrumbs, by the way, too. So I've just put a little parsley into my breadcrumb mix because I'm just going to roll these in the breadcrumbs just like I did the little rolling team, just to give it some texture, just to give it some color. And when it sautés up with the, with the parsley in there, you're going to be able to see it. And if you ever do a Parmesan, like a veal parm or chicken parm or anything like that, Mm -hmm. If when you put the cheese on it, after the cheese, if you sprinkle some fresh cut parsley on top of the cheese before it melts, it melts into it and it makes it look really pretty too. So wow. parsley is like a nice way just to pep up the look of the dish. That just looks great. And it's just such an easy weeknight dinner, you know, just something different, something a little bit special. You can do that for guests or for weeknight. It's oh, absolutely. Such a, such a great, this is such a good um, reminder of how, how easy it is to just roll it up. That's yeah. it. Put whatever you want to put in it. Now, here's the important part of cooking it. The seam side, wherever the bottom is, goes down first. Okay? Because that's going to give us a fighting chance. So find your bottom, like mine was at the side, so I almost lost it. That will give us a fighting chance of it not separating. So the seam side cooks first, and then when we turn it over, 
we have more more of a chance of it not coming apart. Yes, yeah, it brings back memories of Christmas dinner when I made I actually made brajol and put the seam side down and it just all opened up. But it could be because it wasn't they were not long enough. Maybe that was it. Well, you know, another way to keep another little tip or trick to keep that from happening too is if you refrigerate it after you stuff it before you cook it if you get some time put it in the refrigerator and let it firm up okay let it sit okay let it get, let it get more solid okay. because as you're mixing the stuffing it gets loose and that's why I, I always talk about keeping it light you know with not as much liquid in it mm -hmm. but anything like this say I wanted to prep these I have people coming over tonight do it a couple ways I can make them all I can make them all the day before have them stuffed have a whole sheet pan of them in my refrigerator ready to go. I can get up in the morning and I can saute them on either side just to get some color, chill them down again, and then when my guests come, pop them in the oven and just let them heat for about 20 minutes and they're done. Oh, that's great. So right now, all we're really doing is we're cooking for color. Okay, do you want to take a look at some appliances or should we come back to that? Absolutely. Let's let these finish up and let's look at some appliances. Okay, let me screen share. Um, I'm excited to show you some new, new things. Okay, here we go. Share. Okay. So, Jeff, take a look at this. Here is an image that I took the first night I was I was in California. Beautiful. Um, for this event, out on a deck, uh, having dinner. So it was just, you know, just wonderful. And here's another, here's another uh, look at that same dinner. Um, now here, this is the next morning when we had a beautiful, bountiful breakfast made with all the Bosch appliances all ready for us. And you know, Bosch is uh, a, a really wonderful brand. You know, you hear about German engineering, and I don't know, I'm a believer in it. I think it's really true. The fit and the finish, the technology, uh, it, it's authentic materials. They're really, it, it's just beautiful and it really shines, um, you know, throughout the brand. Uh, here, uh, Bosch actually likes to, or let me say European trend, is to have ovens side by side in a horizontal way. And it just, adds a little bit of um, you know symmetry when you have them all across it it adds some easy access and so that's just something I thought I would show and you know I'll tell you the interiors they look small but they're really not because you can hold many multiple racks and uh, they it's like those small washing machines they really perform so much so that you don't need it this is actually a picture of a cooktop in the countertop, a Bosch cooktop, and their appliances are so flush, and you'll hear that word a little more and more. They're tight and they're flush, they're tightly designed into uh, surrounding cabinetry or countertops. What's coming out soon, and this is not the greatest picture, but it's called Flex Induction. Induction is playing such a big role in our cooking these days. And the flex induction is uh, is a special cooktop where you can have a, a different sizes of cooking vessels that will and, and the cook table the cooktop will accommodate different sizes on one whole side of the cooktop and so forth. That I don't have all the information here, but it's really um, something to look at. It's a new technology and it's new. It's really about flexible flexible cooking. Another way of looking at, again, flush installed uh, uh, ovens. In this case, they're side opening. Now they go left or right hinged. And, and the ben one of the benefits is that you open it to the side and you have full access. You don't have to kind of awkwardly go over a door. So that was beautiful. That was interesting. That's, that is uh, available now. Their appliances, their um, refrigerators, beautiful lighting, very clear lighting. They have a Vita Fresh and they have a Hydro Fresh drawer. So they have a lot of technology into how to store, really how to store uh, foods. 
for people who want handles, uh, you know, knobs, they have the knobs. They have touch control, and they also have knobs for both um, ovens and cooktops. Another beautiful, again, look at that super flush installation. And, you know, that's, and Bosch actually is quite affordable compared to some other brands. They are on the affordable side, so worth looking at. This is a new look uh, for Bosch. It's glass. It's actually glass doors. And it's also a small 24 inch refrigerator. Here you have aluminum, uh, I mean stainless steel, you have white glass, and you have black glass. So I think that's something different uh, than the typical stainless steel. Maybe it's a little bit of a softer look, or it's not as a utilitarian sort of look. Um, now, what's coming out soon in April is Bosch's new 24-inch line. Uh, the 24-inch line has the refrigerator, the oven, and that cabinet there. Uh, the cooktop, that cabinet there, is a 18-inch dishwasher. You know, uh, between singles, between city dwellers, and and you know, single households, smaller homes, empty nesters, things like that. There, Bosch feels that there's a demand for these smaller appliances, and I certainly agree. A lot of people are moving back to cities, and you know, cities certainly deserve beautiful, affordable appliances, particularly that are flush installed and very tight. You know, when you have all this air room around the freestanding range and the refrigerator, you're losing a lot of precious um, inches. So it's a it's a really beautiful new line they're coming out with. Again, look at that flush. I mean, this, you know, it's affordable. It's gorgeous. It's terrific. Now here's a uh, part of the class when we we were doing a cooking. We were cooking for our lunch, and uh, here are a lot of people. A lot of people here from Bosch, um, plus a few of us. So there were about six of us, five or six of us, I guess, that went to this event. Beautiful big. Um, kitchen that they have, huge kitchen for cooking, beautiful ingredients, top top shelf ingredients uh, that would be used in every formation. You know they have steam, here they have a grill on the cooktop and you know the, the steam convection is really um, you know something that they believe a lot in. It's a healthy way to cook Here's our lunch. I mean, look at that. We all did something special. Um, steam, steam convection gives you, gives you the best of both worlds, and you can cook one way or the other way or both combined, and the oven will, will figure it out for you if that's what you need. Absolutely figure it out. Um, and another few beautiful things we cooked. The dishwashers. The Bosch is known for their dishwashers. They have four different kinds of handles. They have this recessed, um, they have this other type of uh, recessed without the controls. Um, they have the um, handle, professional handle, and then they have uh, the kind that you can put a wood panel on. Now I'll tell you briefly what's great about these three is that say you're in a corner and you know this comes out a good inch and a half maybe two inches and say you're in a tight little kitchen in a corner you have it in the corner and then you have to the adjacent corner you don't want the drawer to come out and hit it perfect 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 for that type of installation so also again it has a flush look and there we go there so um, yeah just one or two other notes uh, that it you know, they, they really focus on performance, they focus on um, beauty, sort of uh, aesthetics and function, really being equal partners in the design of the appliances. Uh, you know, I'm not, um, let me just say I'm not pitching Botch for any particular reason other than I know the brand for many, many, many years and it, it's just helpful to have gone there and see the, the real beautiful engineering that they're doing these days. And um, so I hope that's been a uh, little, uh, you know, fun to see. Very nice. Yes, thank you, Susan. And, you know, I had a Bosch dishwasher before we moved, and it had lasted. It was like, it, it was probably 10 years old, still running like a charm. And, and the one thing I remember about it was, why I picked it out was inside the dishwasher they didn't have exposed elements it was completely sealed and uh, that just seemed like it was stainless steel inside I believe too in the bottom it just seemed like a much better way to go and it was quiet it was really a lot quieter than what I have here 
Oh, it's so quite. It's in fact they have one uh, dishwasher that um, is only 38 decibel decibels and is the quietest in North America. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Dishwasher's good when it's not running too too loud. You can't hear anything. That's and uh, here's our finished. Uh, it's not really finished, but it's sautéed. You can see the chicken. So you can easily oh, nice. do this all ahead of time. You see, it did hold up pretty well. It didn't open. It stayed kind of sealed, even without an egg. And, and there's actually the seal there, so I should turn it that way. Uh, so it didn't open up. Uh, it's browned a little bit for color. And again, these are gluten-free breadcrumbs, so they don't quite work as same as regular breadcrumbs are in terms of browning. But this is a very light coating. I don't have the extra flour on it. I don't have the egg on it. It's just going to be simple to do. If you want to really seal them up, then you do the flour and you make like little footballs and tighten everything, egg it, and then breadcrumb it. And you'll have a much better seal. But this is nice. This is light. This is like going towards a more, I don't want to say natural because it's not natural, but just a, an easier method of cooking. And uh, like I said, if you let things set up for a little while before you cook them, even with the breadcrumbs on it, it'll tend to uh, hold together a little bit better for you. But you, you, but you didn't, you didn't put um, egg. Be no. You just put the breadcrumbs on. Put the breadcrumbs wow. right on it. Mix, like them, mix some parsley in them, and you see how the parsley helps break it up a little bit. It just and you could put some cheese if you want a Romano cheese in the breadcrumbs. You could season the breadcrumbs up a little bit more with other spices or fresh herbs. But it just makes it look a little prettier, you know. So when it cooks, it comes out a little more than just flat brown. You know, uh, it looks a little more festive. And these can go in the refrigerator now and cool till you when you're ready to cook, or they can go in the oven now. And, and be done in 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. If uh, they're cold, they'll probably take a little bit longer, or you might want to let them warm up to room temperature just a little bit before you pop them in the oven. But great for uh, dinner or for parties. Great, excellent. They they look great. They're easy. They're you know it spices up the weeknight. You know when you just you're looking at the freezer and you you're just looking at these plain meats and you say what am I going to do? You know, and, and okay, so you can broil a steak or grill a steak or whatever. But you know what? This is such a good tool, uh, food to have in the toolbox. This yep. is really good. And if you wanted to make up a little bit of a sauce with it, uh, some kind of just fresh tomatoes or cheese sauce. or I was going to ask you about that. So what do you think? You, I was just going to ask. What do you think you'd do? Well, with something like this, I might take some just nice fresh chopped tomatoes and saute them up with a little bit of basil and or another seasoning, garlic, but a, a, just a light sauce. But I mean, if you wanted to take the sauce to a little bit of another degree, you could serve this over pasta and make this, put this on top of it, or you could serve it over rice. Uh, but you know, a Dijon, a light Dijon mustard sauce is tasty with something like this, or uh, some fresh tarragon or dill in it. Uh, just anything, you know. Well, you, you do have broccoli rabe, so you have a little bit of strong flavor. But if you're going with spinach or something lighter, then you could make the sauce a little bit more robust. Okay, so let me ask you. I love Dijon with chicken dishes. I just love it. What would? Okay, this is stump the chef. What would you do if you did Dijon on the inside with some sort of stuffing? What do you think? That's that's easy, and that's a good, uh, very good point. I'm glad you said that because, like I put the ham down before, you could take and what I did with the other light chicken breasts uh, that I had not uh, stuffed that much. Okay, you can take it at this point, and you could spread the Dijon on now, a light layer of Dijon on there. You could take pesto and put a light layer of pesto or some other kind of pesto. On, on the chicken, there we go, on the chicken right there. So you could put your different types of seasoning that you want here before you stuff it with the main ingredient. Or again, leave it as simple as this little rolling team and then just roll it up when you're done. So I mean if you want to add a little a light layer of Dijon to it prior, you know, that'll work mm -hmm. as well. Sweet. Okay, Sweet. so again, the sky's the limit. Think outside the box. Think what you like. You know, if you want to make them like a Mexican stuffed chicken and serve it with some salsa, you know, maybe you want to put some pepper jack inside of it, or you know, it just you know, think think about it. You could stuff it with rice. You can stuff it with anything that you can really hold together in there. So it's very simple, easy dish to make, and changes up how you're eating. You know, so not just chicken again. 
Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Just it's life changing. <laughs> well, thank you. And, uh, so good show. Thanks so much for everyone that came. We had a nice audience today. Nazim, Carmen, Candy, yeah. uh, Bruno, uh, Michael Thomas, Atlin, Aslan Bloor. So many people, Coach Moore, coming in to say hi and watching. All our friends. Yep. Yeah. And those of you that are being quiet, because there's more than that watching today, I can see. So all the all the lurkers and watchers, we appreciate you and thank you so much. And we hope to see you around our kitchen table again soon. Yes, we do. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye-bye.